President Fakhruddin Ali Ahmad received a top secret letter from Prime Minister Indira Gandhi around midnight on 25th of June 1975 requesting a proclamation of emergency. Given the urgency of the matter, Indira had said in the letter that there was no time to consult the cabinet. But even before the president could consult constitutional experts, Indira's private secretary R.K. Dhawan arrived at the president's house with a draft proclamation of the emergency. The president signed on the dotted line. When they woke up on the 26th of June, the people of India had lost their constitutional rights and liberties. Their cherished democracy had been crushed. In a pre-dawn nationwide soup, dozens of opposition leaders like Jay Prakash Narayan, Murarji Desai, Charan Singh, Atal Bihari Vajpayee, L.K. Advani and Congress dissidents led by Chandrasekhar were rounded up under two draconian laws, the Maintenance of Internal Security Act and the Defence of India Rules. George Fernandes was the only prominent opposition leader who managed to slip out of the police net. He was arrested in the Baroda Dynamite case in 1976. George was charged with waging war against the state by planning to blow up railway tracks and government establishments. The iconic image of George Fernandes in shackles became a powerful metaphor of the emergency, reminding the people of the loss of their freedom. George Fernandes later fought the 1977 Lok Sabha elections from Muzaffarpur in Bihar from jail and won with a huge margin. The government also cracked down on the media to control adverse reactions to the emergency. Electricity supply to Delhi's newspapers was disconnected. Press censorship was imposed and censor officials were authorized to clear stories before newspapers were printed. After the emergency, L.K. Advani, Information and Broadcasting Minister in the Janta Party government famously said, when Indira Gandhi asked the media to bend, it crawled. The Indian Express and the Statesman offered a symbolic protest, leaving their front page editorial section blank on the 28th of June 1975. Well-known journalist and author Kuldeep Nayar was also arrested. As surprising as it may sound, people initially reacted passively or even supported the emergency as trains ran on time and chaos on university campuses and on the streets ended. The crackdown on smugglers and hoarders was welcomed as prices of foodstuffs and essential commodities fell. The announcement of a 20-point program targeted at the betterment of weaker sections created a positive atmosphere. However, poor implementation of the program soon had people disillusioned. While Indira Gandhi imposed the emergency, the one person most closely associated with it, the face of the excesses that followed, was her son Sanjay Gandhi. From mid-1976 onwards, Sanjay emerged as an extra-constitutional authority. Senior ministers, chief ministers and officials courted him and carried out his orders. Those who didn't were punished. Sanjay's family planning program became a source of terror for men and women who were forced to undergo sterilization procedures. Inder Kumar Gujral, Information and Broadcasting Minister, was a victim of Sanjay's wrath for refusing to kowtow to him. Sanjay blamed Gujral, who later became Prime Minister in 1997-98, for poor coverage of Indira's rally on the 20th of June. He was replaced by Vidya Charan Shukla as INB Minister to rein in the media. Besides Shukla, Bansi Lal, R.K. Dhawan, Delhi's Lieutenant Governor Krishan Chand, Naveen Chavla and the DIG of Delhi Police, P.S. Bhindar, were Sanjay's core team. Later, they were all identified as villains of the emergency by the Shah Commission, which investigated the atrocities of the 21-month-long period. The commission, which was set up in 1977, blamed Bansi Lal, 
who was Haryana's chief minister and later defense minister for gross misuse of power. As chief minister, he helped Sanjay acquire land for the Maruti factory on the outskirts of Gurgaon. The DIG of police, P.S. Bhindar, was notorious at Delhi for arbitrary arrests of people who stood in Sanjay's way. He was held responsible for the police brutality and the killing of the Turkman Gate slum dwellers in Old Delhi who resisted the demolition of their houses and forcible sterilization. The police arrested and tortured Lawrence Fernandez to get him to reveal his brother George Fernandez's whereabouts. Lawrence was a physical and mental wreck long after his release from jail in 1977. P. Rajan, an engineering student in Calicut, in Kerala, was arrested on suspicion of being a Naxalite and tortured to death. His body was never recovered. After rising to the pinnacle of power in 1971, Indira Gandhi found herself besieged during the JP movement. Fearing she would lose power, she decided to deliver what she called shock treatment to her political opponents. She made up her mind after she was found guilty of electoral malpractices on the 12th of June 1975. The road she chose to deliver this shock treatment led to attacking the very edifice of India, its constitution, reducing parliament to a rubber stamp, arresting opposition leaders and gagging the media. The emergency was a dark period in India's modern history.